One rabbi has famously said that reading scripture in translation is like kissing the bride through the veil. Let's face it, it's not exactly the intimacy the groom was going for. But hey, at least it's the right girl, right? And so it is that when we read scripture in translation, it is indeed the word of God that we come into contact with. But let's face it, there is something special about knowing the original languages that stand behind this text. There is a greater richness that I can tap into, and especially so with Verbum Bible software. In this video, that's what I want to discuss, how to get the most out of your Bible, even if you're not as expert in Greek and Hebrew as you wish you were. So watch how this works. Let's jump to 1 Corinthians 10, 16. I'm in the ESV, and what's leaping off of the page to me is this concept of participation. We have a participation in the blood of Christ, a participation in the body of Christ. But not just that, in verse 18 and then in 20, there's this language of participants in the altar, participants with demons. And look, here in 17 and also in 21, there's the language of partaking of the one bread, partaking of the table of the Lord. And so, um, see how a concept like participation is leaping off the page in this version in a way that is not the case, say, when we jump to the NRSV, because there the vocabulary is different. Look at the word choice we find here. Instead, it's a sharing in the blood of Christ that we find. And then there's partners in the altar, altar, and these are partaking of the one bread. So not all of this language is the same. We could jump to the Dewey Reams, for example, and there we have something new, the communion of the blood of Christ. Okay, so I wish I could compare and contrast without opening up every individual Bible. Well, let me show you something you can do right here inside the ESV, for example. Come to the top of the pane and notice that we have what's called multiple resources display. To set the tool, just click the arrow here and I'm going to go ahead and save it. You can add um, as many or as few of these resources that you like. Type in the NRSV, for example, and then check the box, save that so that once you've loaded the tool, you can use it simply by clicking this pane. And look what you can toggle on and off. Go from one version to three, juxtaposed. See how the uh, ESV is right beside the NRSV and now the Dewey Reams? And you can easily compare participation here to sharing here. And so it is with all the, all the different vocabulary. But that's not the only reason to use the multiple resource pane. That is indeed one. Comparing English translations amongst, uh, amongst the English language, you can see several versions. But look, this even works with foreign languages. So for example, if you want to compare the Dewey Reims in English to um, the Nova Vulgata in Latin, you can easily do so and there see that the language of communion corresponds to the communicatio here. That might be something of interest. Of course, it works in the other direction too. You could have the foreign language um, as your main Bible and then load the multiple resources display so that your English translation appears here on the side. And there you can compare koinonia to participation or koinonoi to participants. Oh, more on the Greek in a moment, but let me jump to the NRSV to make this point. You don't have to use the multiple resources display in order to tap into the Greek language and the richness that's waiting for you in the Greek language. You can even do it with this pane here. See how the there's an Aleph and an Omega and hovering over I see that this is interlinears. Let's go ahead and arm this tool by clicking reverse interlinear pane. If you don't have that box checked, go ahead and check it and watch what appears at the bottom of my page. You see how I have a pane that I can turn on and off? It just kind of um, rests on top of the text that is, is above. And there I can see, for example, that this sharing is a koinonia. And look, even if you don't read the Greek letters, you can have the manuscript in transliteration here. If you already know 
how to transliterate. You don't need the transliteration. You know how to read the Greek. You can turn that off and, and have less information. Um, I'll go ahead and keep that on for the time being. What I want to also point out is I can be clued into the fact that the word koinonia has the root koinos. See that here? But look, jump to the word par... No, excuse me. Jump to the word... Where's kononoi? Partners in this one. Koin, uh, see how this is the word koinonoi. There's the lemma koinonos. And here is the root koinos. See how that is uh, the same root that I saw up above? Now, this is something, even if you don't have this pane open, remember this interlinear pane at the bottom of the page? Even just by clicking, you can allow have these highlights appear that give you some of this good information. It's what I've got going on right now with this visual filter. Come down here to Resources, make sure this is open, and then um, scroll down to where it says Corresponding words and make it go to click. Um, and then I would suggest showing in all appropriate resources. And my suggestion is that you click all of these, at least for the time being. Same word, same surface text, same lemma, and same root. Once you've done so, simply by clicking the word sharing, look what happens here. See how this is in blue, just like it's in blue over here? This is indeed the same exact word. Whereas in a slight, slightly different shade, we get now the word partners. And the reason for that is that partners, it's not the exact same surface text, but it, it does share the same root. And I love that Verbum can kind of clue me in to go check this out, even just by clicking the words. Even if I never opened a dictionary, even if I never looked at a, a, an interlinear pane, I'm already tapping into truths that are available from studying the original language. I think that's pretty great. Now, let me go a step further. Let's, let's juxtapose an English text with the Greek text. You can learn a ton of Greek in this way, by the way. Just highlight the words, for example, a participation in the blood of Christ. And see what's happening on the left side of my pane? Koinonia tu haimatos tu Christu. And then I could uh, select a participation in the blood of Christ. And see how now that selection changes? I also have another visual filter being used. And this is called corresponding words. Excuse me, corresponding selection. If you don't have this box checked, make sure you do. And I would say, go ahead and do this in all appropriate resources. It's just so useful. You can do it in both directions, by the way. If you want to highlight the, the Greek text and then come over here to English, you'll see that, that the corresponding words are highlighted. You can really learn a lot just by noticing corresponding selections. All right. I suppose I want to end with a theological reflection, something that you can make sense of now better having used these tools. It's exactly what is stated in number 1331 of the Catechism. It's talking about the different names of the Blessed Sacrament, the Sacrament of the Eucharist. And here it says one of the names for the Eucharist is Holy Communion. And it explains why. It says, because by this sacrament, we unite ourselves to Christ, who makes us sharers in his body and blood, to form a single body. And then look at this footnote that's here. It tells me to go check out 1 Corinthians 10.16, where we're, uh, we understand why we're sharers in the body of Christ, in the blood of Christ. Because that's this language. Of course, in the ESV, I'm familiar with participation. But that corresponds to this notion of sharing, or partaking, or communing. See, because we commune of the one bread, we form a one body in Christ, one holy communion. We are what we eat, I suppose. That's the logic of Paul, and that's the language that is used. And now we understand better why that's the case, having used these tools. So get familiar with them so that you can make them work for you.